first cut, building the kitchen cabinets and the teeny house camp camper thing. Um, the first order of business is, is to fabricate a support for the floor of the cabinets. Um, making the, this frame two and three quarter inches tall, I think that's a little shorter than average, but um, you know, everything in the teeny house is a little smaller than average. And I refuse to pay $80 for a sheet of plywood that's going to get painted and put behind doors and never seen again. So I'm piecing together some plywood I had. Um, the red plywood is a little thicker than the unpainted plywood. And I started with the red painted plywood because I had three pieces, but I couldn't find one of them until after, of course, I get the middle all nailed down and there it showed up. But it's not that big a deal. I had been holding off starting the kitchen cabinets because I didn't have a sink. Well, now I have a sink. Um, it's cast iron. It's about 30 years old because there's a stamp on the bottom of it. And it's in pretty good shape. Um, I'd prefer a regular white one, but the vast majority of sinks you see for sale are 36 inches or longer. And I didn't want to put that big of a sink in here. So this one's 24. I grabbed it and we're starting on the cabinets. This is the third little piece of plywood that's going down on the bottom. I'm um, just shooting with nails. I'm not gluing them or anything. So I've got a bottom deck and I got the closure panel on the side. This is where the little mini fridge will go. And I'm ready to make the face frames. I think the trend now is to use uh, European hinges and not have face frames like we did back in the day but I'm an old person, so I'm gonna do face frames. And there's gonna be one here, and one here, and one here. And the good thing is, between here and here, it's less than 32 inches, so my doors will be less than, no, it's less than 30 inches, so my doors will be less than 15, which means they'll fit through my planer. So when you're using that old lumpy pecan like I am, that's a good thing. I rip three two inch strips out of a piece of the pecan, and doesn't really matter how thick they are, but I'm gonna run them through the planer and kind of clean them up a little bit. As long as they're on, <clears throat> as long as they're the same thickness, the face frames will work fine. So again, I'm using uh, pocket screws to put the face frame together with the little jig. It makes it like real easy. Um, one thing you kind of need to do though when you're do some, doing pocket screws is to clamp everything tightly down to the table or clamp it to something. Sometimes I use my table saw because when the screws go in, they, uh, it wants to lift and separate and you don't always get a good flat fit. fit. So uh, I got the other board, it's hard to see, but I got some vice grips and it's clamped solid so it's not going anywhere. They sell two different types of screws. Some of them have a coarse thread and some of them have a fine thread. When I'm working with the Cypress, which is really soft, I use a coarse thread. And then I'm working with this pecan. Um, it's very hard. Even though it's not pristine material, it's very hard. So I use the fine thread. And uh, no, no splits. It's working well. Face frames don't get much easier than that. Um, you just gotta cut your stock and stick them together with those pocket screws. Now I gotta cut a uh, dado or a rabbit. I gotta cut a rabbit out the back of this face frame to fit around this plywood. I have it, have, got it sticking out some. I did that on purpose to kind of lock the face frame and the side plywood together. The other side, I could have put a plywood in, but since it's gonna be in the corner where there's already plywood, I was just being cheap. Um, I'm not going to put a plywood side or a plywood back because we already have painted plywood in the tiny house. So we'll make do with something else on the back and this uh, right side. 
here I'm cutting the groove in the I think it's called a style that I should have cut before I put the thing together this is where the 3 8 uh, plywood on that end fits into this uh, vertical style to give it just a little more strength this pecan that I'm using came from a, a tree we cut down on a job site well it wasn't even my job site it was a friend's job site but he knew I was kind of nutty about wood so cut it down loaded it up and had it milled um, later on when I'm working on a countertop it's sycamore and that's the same thing it was a tree I cut down on my job site and had it milled so so heavy construction is a, a hard way to make a living but it has its perks that's for sure So when a guy with as bad eyesight as I have, with, it, with hands that are as shaky as mine, can make nice looking face frames that quickly, that easily, pocket screws are magic. These are the drawer glides for the one drawer that's gonna be in the kitchen. And I'm going retro. This is just wooden, wood, a wooden drawer glide, nothing fancy, no ball bearings. Um, the little, unfinished wood block in the middle is just to get my spacing correct so between these two um, guides that I'm tacking on it's the same distance as the opening in the front of the uh, face frames same thing so when I nail it up it'll be continuous from the face frames all the way around so I've got all my sides cut to length and I got the rabbit on the sides that'll help keep the front from getting knocked off and I'm getting ready to plow the joint for the bottom plywood and normally I use quarter inch plywood for drawer bottoms but this one's pretty big and it's gonna be like a kitchen drawer so I have enough of this 3 8 this is actually pretty nice stuff to make the other end of the other cabinet and the drawer bottom so the drawer bottom is gonna be a 3 8 so I just need to uh, I'm not putting a dado blade or anything on there I'm just ripping it and moving the fence and ripping it and moving the fence because it's just four little pieces so the height of the drawers is just about 3 16ths less than the uh, height of the opening in the front of the cabinet. Um, again, I'm going with a 3 8 bottom because it's such a big wide drawer. And I um, glued and nailed the sides together and then I attached the front later on. And at some point, and I'm pretty sure there was a cat involved, it fell off my workbench. I found it on the ground. And the... Um, that joint that I got my hands on right now came loose. So I'm gonna put it back together, I use screws. Um, screws are always better than nails if you can get them in there. So I don't think I'll have any more trouble with it not being strong enough. So my drawer glides, pretty simple here. They're attached to the face frame nails. That's not gonna move. In the back, they're attached to that white board that has it, give it the right spacing. But the white board is not attached to the carcass of the uh, cabinet is not attached to that piece of plywood back there so what this will allow me to do is when I make my drawer and slide it into place if there's an opening at the top of the drawer face I can lower that whiteboard in the back um, and then the opposite of that and then side to side if the drawer doesn't close flush on both sides I can scoot that whiteboard side to side a little bit and when I get everything uh, copacetic I'll pop a couple screws in it and we'll be done okay we have a drawer what you're looking at we have a drawer and it works just needs a drawer face sweet I glued up these two long pieces of pecan and this will make three doors and I need one more we get four doors and two drawer fronts the drawer fronts I don't have to glue up so I have a board over there if I cut it uh, long enough to get the two drawer fronts out of That'll give me a drop long enough for a door, for the last door. And I'll cut another one, I'll glue those together. So uh, we'll have all our glue ups done. Um, and uh, these should be easy, like I say, cause I can run them through the planer. So I planed my glue ups down. This long one I cut in half just to make it more manageable. So this is two doors, this is a door, and this is a door, and this is the door fronts. I'm gonna put my um, table saw sled on the table saw and cut them to length. 
Okay, this is a little later on in time and the doors have been um, ripped to width and plain to thickness. And here I'm cutting the ends with my um, sled. It's the best way to get a nice square end on a wide board. And then I have to cut a recess around the perimeter for the 3 8 uh, hinges. I need a 3 8 by 3 8 uh, notch in the bottom of the door on all the sides except for the two sides where the doors touch each other. And before I did this, I put the round over bit and cut a little, I think it's a 3 8 round over. If you wait, if you cut the notch first, then the round over bearing doesn't have anything to to guide by so I did the round over bearing on the three sides not the side in the middle and now I'm ripping uh, the 3 8 by 3 8 recess for the hinges and I just have the saw blade set 3 8 tall and 3 8 to the outside of the blade and just kind of run them through there twice and uh, it's pretty easy no problem so I'm mounting the hinges on the doors. Um, I forget the measurement, but I use a combination square just to get them all the hinges the same distance from the top and the bottom, just so they'll line up and look pretty. And I use a little spring clamp to hold the hinge so I can put two hands on the drill and that helps my shaky self get the little bitty baby screws in there. And uh, I'm just putting one on each hinge just cause you know, sometimes things don't work out and that gives me a a spare to do a different hole and putting them on there um, easy sneezy okay drawer fronts are on this one behind the sink I just put two little blocks and screwed it from the back because it's going to be fixed this one I got it where I wanted it I clamped it and I put some screws from the back and I'll have to take it off and glue it because this is real important that it's strong and the drawer works incredibly well with just a little bit of furniture wax. Sweet, now, this is tough. Decided to leave a space here for a mini fridge, even though I'm not gonna get a mini fridge because we don't have electricity and it seems stupid to run a mini fridge off a generator. But one day we might get electricity, in which case I would like to have a mini fridge and if I don't make space for it now, it'll be a problem later on. So I'm gonna leave a gap. I'm not sure it's about this big. You gotta, I just gotta check some sizes on the internet. And I guess I'll just put shelves in there for right now. And then there'll be one more little cabinet over here, probably with a fancy pullout deal. Cause this won't be here. This is just sitting for now. Anyway, super stoked. It's all gotta come out. It all needs to be sanded and finished, but, uh, Enough for today. It is like 99 degrees outside. It is miserable. So the carcass has a coat of stain and one coat of varnish. I pulled it away from the wall. Kitchen cabinets done. Well, nothing's ever done around here. Um, but the doors are stained and varnished twice. The inside has a coat of white house paint. Everything fits, everything works. The drawer works great. What I'm gonna do now is put the top on it and mark the sink hole and cut the sink before I put the last coat of varnish, hopefully, on the top. I was gonna use epoxy, but it's so shiny and it stays sticky so long I can't keep the dust off of it. Oh, by the way, I got this shelf support, but I don't know how long a shelf I can put because I don't know what the plumbing's gonna look like. I may encroach into here with the shelf. So I'll just cut that later, but the support's here. So at one time right here, I had a stack of sycamore. They went all the way up to the bottom of the rafters. But I only have a few pieces left and I'm gonna take this big piece here and this big piece here and attempt to make a cabinet top for the kitchen out of it. I'll bring it down there and clean it up and see what it looks like. So I didn't realize it till I got these two boards and put them here on the table. Um, these were cut consecutively off the log, so they are a pair. So that can make this more interesting. Um, sycamore trees are plentiful and they grow huge and you never see furniture made out of the stuff, even though it's hard because it's not stable. It warps and twists and bows and it's just almost impossible to work with, but we're gonna work with it. I 
toyed with the idea of keeping this cavity in the middle and setting in a board, but I'll probably botch it up. So I'm just going to rip this middle part off with the table saw and then with the hand plane, get them to fit well and glue these together. That's my first step. So actually the first step was to cut a couple of feet off of uh, this end and about a foot off the other end because they're way longer than they need to be and the dang things are heavy so I was just trying to make them a little more manageable. So first rip, I'm just uh, ripping it by eye. I'm following that pencil mark with the table saw blade and I can get it pretty close but I can't get it close enough to clamp and glue. But uh, Then I tried with the router and the straight edge and I got it straighter but I had a bunch of defects. So I'm trying to refine the straightness of the cut edge with a router and a straight edge. Um, now my straight edge is not a real straight edge, it's an aluminum tow board from some handrail and it's very straight but it doesn't have much of a lip so it doesn't take much for the router to go over the top of it and with this um, sycamore board being so lumpy and bumpy a couple of times the router jumped and left a divot so I've got a straighter edge now but I have issues again so with the router and the straight edge I got a pretty straight line but I got my little whoopses where the router jumped over the straight edge because everything's so wonky um, so what I'm gonna do now is use this straight edge on the table saw fence and cut a straight edge on this side and then flip it back over and trim this like a half inch to get rid of the wonks. And then I think I'll be within gluing range. And then at some point, I'm gonna glue this back on because I want that little live edge in the front, even though it's not real dramatic. It'll be, uh, well, I don't know if I'm gonna go to that trouble or not. Anyway, I gotta get a straight edge to glue these two things together. Yeah, they got a pretty good fit. I'm gonna glue it up. It's dry right now. I'm gonna glue it up with epoxy. Um, because I don't know, it's better, a little better gap filling properties, but I don't really have any gaps. However, this uh, is kind of falling apart and I don't want to lose these pieces. I want these epoxy together because I want that look. So I'm gonna use epoxy, do the joint, and I'm gonna put some thickened epoxy in this crack to hold it still. And uh, it'll be kind of it for the day because it, it don't cure very fast. Okay, next day, the glue is cured. I got my heavy artillery out here. I'm just knocking off some of the uh, some of the ridges and the bumps, trying to get it um, not smooth, but smoother than, uh, than it is now. Okay, next day, um, this is the bottom. I've got the top, um, bottom side up, and I'm routing out a square to put in a plywood, uh, I don't know what it would be called patch and this is underneath the bad spot on the top and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end where it's really really bad because I want to give it some strength and I want to not use quite so much epoxy when I'm patching it back together so I'm gonna glue a little piece of plywood in these two holes so that when I turn it over to do the epoxy work or whatever I'm going to do, it'll have some strength because these little pieces, they were just about to fall out. But I glue a three quarter inch plywood back in there. We'll have something. And then if some somebody's stepping on the counter later on and climbing on it, like maybe me, it's uh, less likely to break or it probably won't break. So I've gone over the top with the power hand planer to knock out the big bumps. And then I put a 36 inch pad on the circular sander and I got out most of the like terrible marks, like these uh, planer marks and stuff or the marks on the sawmill. And now I'm going to go over it with this 60 and it's the only pad I have. So I wish I had more. Now it's not, it's not flat. It's lumpy, but it's okay. It's sycamore. If I wanted it flat, I wouldn't have used sycamore because sycamore is lumpy. But it's going to be smooth, you know, cleanable, wipeable. It's just going to be kind of roly poly, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think it's a good trade off for how cool this wood's going to look next to that dark pecan. So 
So I'm through 100 grit on the little random orbital. And I think it's time to go ahead and fill all my defects with epoxy before I go any further. So I had the vacuum cleaner and clean all the holes out. Now there's a, there's a lot of checking and stuff on this end, but on this end, it's only the big knots that I need to fill. So I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and put some sawdust in it, which is gonna make it turn dark and fill the holes. So my two plywood patches came out A-OK. -okay. My epoxy job not quite as well. So this epoxy leaked all the way through and dripped on the floor. And this epoxy got all bubbly and it's too low. If I would have put the heat gun on this, the bubbles would have disappeared, but I didn't know at the time. Um, same with this one. Same with these two. I don't know what maybe got too hot because it was thicker than the rest, but so I'll just have to sand it down and put another layer. I was hoping to get it one shot, but that didn't happen. More sanding today. Okay, a couple hours of sanding this morning and coming along. Um, I'm through eight, I'm through 100 grit on the random orbital. Um, I'm not going to go much further until I build this and this and these two up to grade with epoxy. Um, I was able to sand outside, which is kind of nice because it was cloudy, but the sun's coming up, which means if I try to sand over it, I'll be dripping sweat in it. So I don't want to do that. So I think I might move it in, inside. Do this epoxy and just uh, that's it for the day for this project. Sycamore has this really cool subtle green, but unfortunately, when I put a finish on it, all of that's going to just go away. And I know that because I've tried to use this stuff for furniture before, or I have used it for furniture before. It's just that I don't know any way to finish it without losing how pretty it is. And especially on this one, I'm going to put epoxy on it, so it's going to all kind of. I'm going to lose a lot of this detail. But life is a compromise. I'm getting ready to trade some aesthetics for some practicality and some durability. And uh, that's just what we're going to do. We're going to put a good, long, wearing, uh, easy to keep up finish on top of it. The countertop has, uh, I just put a coat of varnish on the bottom. Seems like it would be good to seal the bottom. I'm going to flip it over and move it to the carport and sand the top and put the first layer of... Um, epoxy on the top I'm trying to spread all this stuff out so i don't mess myself up with sawdust so i've moved my board to the carport where i have a little more room it's less dusty and i don't have to worry about the daily rains um, this is epoxy is thinned with mek i want it to be a little thinner i want it to soak in well especially on this end grain so i don't get checking later on and i just uh, painted it on like paint uh, my brush was falling apart. It was kind of irritating. These little chip brushes that I get at Harbor Freight, they're, uh, they're not consistent. You'll get three of them that do really well and hold up, and then you'll get one that just kind of falls apart. So this was a fall aparter. But I got a coat on everything. So the bottom now has a thick coat of varnish just to kind of stabilize the uh, movement between the top and the bottom. And this is the first coat of epoxy. It's thinned with MEK. I uh, just brushed it on. Most A lot of this is going to soak in, which is kind of what I wanted to do. I did the ends and the edges also with this mixture of epoxy. I moved to the carport just to get it out of my way. Okay, the first coat of epoxy that I put on this morning is dry. I don't know if it's hard enough to sand yet, but I'm not going to sand it till tomorrow. But a lot of it's soaked in, which is a good thing. So we'll sand it maybe with 180 grit. Try to get it whited out, they call that. Try to knock it all down, but a lot of it soaked in bad, so it may need two more coats. But anyway, tomorrow we'll sand it and put another coat on and see what happens. I don't want, um, want it to look blotchy. I want it to be shiny all the way around. So this is 120 grit and the big random orbital, and they call this whitening out or a they do in the marine world anyway and i'm just trying to knock it all down and we're going to put another coat of epoxy just like the first coat we put on there except it won't have thinner in it okay this is the second coat of epoxy it gave me a really hard time it's so thick it did not want to brush out and my brush fell apart um, i should have warm, warmed up the epoxy first and i didn't and uh, i did the best i could and then after the fact 
put the heat gun on it with the brush and, and uh, just trying to save it basically. And it got better, but uh, it still didn't turn out too great in the long run. So this is 180 grit on the second coat of epoxy. And I decided to go ahead and cut the sink hole before I put the third and hopefully final coat, even though I'm switching to um, varnish. So I got it all whited up and then I brought it in the shed in the tiny house and marked for the sink. Got the cutout for the sink marked. Centered on the door, which is centered on the window, and I'm going to bring it out to the sawhorses and cut it. But first, I'm going to put the sink on top just to double check because I don't trust myself. Okay, QA, QC complete. The sink is on the top and the lines are in the right place. And this sink was made in 77, which makes it 45 years old. Still in pretty good shape. Still pretty heavy, too. It's just as heavy as the is the day they made it. color is really really wonky I might have to paint it but that's for another day so this is Home Depot quality spar varnish um, I fil ran it through a filter and I'm using a brand new foam brush that was in a package so I know it's dust free I'm struggling with dust here I got it in the teeny house and I vacuumed the floor and the second I finish putting this varnish on I'm gonna step outside and close the door and not come back in and hopefully I can get a fairly dust-free finish. Uh, this is what I hope to be the last coat of varnish. I think I got it pretty even. I used a foam brush because it's clean. I just took it out of the packet so I know it didn't have much dust on it. Now I'm going to get out of here and shut the door and uh, try not to stir up any dust for the next hour and maybe we'll get a good finish on it. Countertop, we're calling good. Done. Cabinets, we're calling good. Done. The cabinets I stained to be dark. The counter, I put nothing on it. I thought it would be light, but it turned out dark too. But anyway, it's very pretty. And the sink fits, and it didn't cost anything except a bunch of sandpaper. And uh, super happy. Let this varnish cure for a couple of days. I'll drop the sink in, and it needs, I need to start hooking up some plumbing and checking it out. I don't have a whole lot of carpentry left to do in here. I got some trim. I do the ceiling up there, which won't take that long. Yeah, it's coming together.